Hello, my name is Armin Orlik and I represent Devinity today as a DevOps engineer. We have been operating in the IT market since 2004. We primarily develop software that supports the development of small and large enterprises. We use innovative technologies and support the implementations of new solutions. In today's webinar, I will show you how to generate a fully automatic pipeline in a few simple steps, compatible with the latest DevOps trends. The innovative service provided by the version control environment, GitLab will help us. Auto DevOps, that is official name, is a functionality that allows automating the software development process. You will find that even the lack of the knowledge won't be a problem. I invite you to see my presentation. For today's webinar, I will use the GitLab environment and the Kubernetes cluster. GitLab is a place to build and run pipelines, while Kubernetes is the space for implementation. Both services in our demo are hosted in the cloud. However, you can also install them on private dedicated servers. I decided to choose these two specific tools because Kubernetes offer attractive licensing in its open source version and GitLab provides a free package for small teams. Okay, let's move to the GitLab system. Our today's activity begins with the view of creator of a new repository in GitLab. For the purpose of this presentation, I will use a ready-made template for the application written in Ruby. I will quickly, quickly complete the name field and mark the project as public. Some of you may wonder why to choose public visibility. The answer is quite simple. I am currently using the free version of GitLab and some of the presented features are available only in the public projects. Of course, when using the paid plans of GitLab, we get access to all functionalities without any restrictions. I will wait for a moment to generate a new project and I'm automatically move to the repository view. As I mentioned earlier, I will use the example Hello World project written in Ruby. In the new repository, apart from the application files, we won't find any data or guidelines related to the process of automation and construction of pipelines. That element will be taken care of by the Auto DevOps service provided by GitLab. From the basic view of the repository, we also have access to a number of actions that we can perform and which GitLab itself suggests. That's among others, adding some default files the current project does not include yet, but also launching the Auto DevOps service, the adding the Kubernetes cluster. I will then quickly start the configuration of the cluster to show you how simple it is. I move to the Kubernetes tab where we have two possibilities of integration. The first option involves an already existing cluster where we fill in all necessary credentials. The second option use the Google Cloud Platform where a Kubernetes cluster will be created for us. I will use the second solution. It's very convenient and quick. All I need is an active account in the Google ecosystem, for example, Gmail. Also, pay attention to the free trial period provided by GCP. It's 12 months long and $300 from the budget will be used for any activities in the cloud. OK, I'm going back to our GCP integration with GitLab now. Immediately after logging in, I have the opportunity to create a new Kubernetes cluster in the Google Cloud. To present you how more accurately that we were doing now in GitLab actually works, 
I have opened a bookmark from the GCP platform. As you can see, at the moment, we don't have any Kubernetes cluster. I will create it using GitLab by typing in a name. Going forward, I have the options to choose the zone where the cluster will be created. I can define the number of nodes that will be part of a new cluster and their type. Those who would like to get more information on the specific resources or prices uh, have easy access to the documentation. I accept all settings and process of creating a cluster begins. It will take about a minute depending on the resources used. In the meantime, I would like to show you that the cluster is actually, uh, actually uh, created at the GCP site following the guidelines that I introduced. Now I will refresh the page and there you go. The new cluster is being created right now. I will return to the GitLab and wait a second. When my cluster is ready for operation, I can efficient, efficiently manage from the position of GitLab and so. I will start by installing the Helm tiller. Then I will install Ingress that will be responsible for organizing the traffic within my cluster. It will act as an entry point in my infrastructure. Moments after installation, I get the IP address that was assigned to this service. I will copy it because I will need it to the next step. Finally, I also install Prometheus, which will be responsible for monitoring the entire Kubernetes cluster. After a few moments, Prometheus will start providing necessary information about the infrastructure at this stage. And the monitoring scope will become much broader in the later stage. OK, it's time to get back to view more of my repository. GitLab informs me that the Kubernetes has been configured. So now I will launch the Auto DevOps service. By default, Auto DevOps is turned off for each new repository. To start the service, we navigate from the repository panel to the settings, then select the CI CD tab and pick up the second option from the top. An alternative and faster, in my opinion, way would be using the action that GitLab suggests from the repository view. OK. I will go quickly to the right tab where I get access to short information about the service itself and ability to run it. For this purpose, I still have to provide a domain for our Kubernetes cluster that will consist the ingress IP address. I have previously copied uh, the NIPIO service. I accept the new settings. At this point, the magic of Auto DevOps begins. To take a closer look at it, we will return to the repository view of, uh, for a moment. From here, you can see that the pipeline has been automatically started for our project. So let's take a look at its construction and operation. Using navigation, we'll move to the CI-CD category in our repository and then to the pipeline tab. At this point, all information about pipelines related to our project is collected. We can easily find out what the state of our pipeline is, who created it and which changes it concerns. Next, we see a simplified flow diagram in the form of stages, the date and time of last run, and we have access to control the operation of the process itself, including its launch, stopping or deleting. 
At the moment we can see that our pipeline is running and we want to learn more about it. By choosing its name, we move quickly to a more detailed view. And from this perspective, we see the flow of work and the construction of our pipeline. The stages are divided into individual phases that clearly illustrate the scope of tests. Let's return to the very beginning and summary what actually happened. Well, starting the Auto DevOps service in the first place created a pipeline, the task of which it is to build the application, test it, deploy it to the Kubernetes cluster, and in the last stage run performance tests. The entire process was built automatically following, following the default settings of the Auto DevOps service. Let me explain briefly how it works in practice. So each phase is triggered by GitLab runners. That is temporary virtual environment whose purpose is performing a specific task, optionally creating an artifact and finishing the work. And so starting from the beginning, the build stage recognizes the programming language that uh, we used in the project. Then using the default builders, it creates a Docker image of our application and sends it to the local repository of Docker images, which is maintained as an integral part of the GitLab environment. In the next stage, our application is tested in many different aspects, including static code analysis and control of its quality. Security gaps in the container and dependencies are performed as well. We also check the licenses used in our project and carry out other tests we have included in the code repository. The production stage consists of the deployment element of our application in a designated place. In our case, it will be a Kubernetes cluster. The last stage is performance tests, carried out and implemented version of an application. As I mentioned before, tests generated reports in form of artifacts. We have easy access to them from the pipeline view, just select the appropriate tab. We can also send artifacts to any place or analyze them offline, as shown in the performance test report. The summary presented here is an artifact downloaded directly from the GitLab and generated in form of the page of zip out HTML page. The operation of our pipeline has been completed. Now, let's move quickly to the tab showing deployment. From the current view, we have access to all implemented versions of our application. We can easily access to our project in the production version, manage the number of replicas and monitor the Kubernetes cluster. Let's summarize what has happened so far. So, we launched the Auto DevOps service, which created the default pipeline for us. Its task is simple. Build an application, test it, and deploy it into the designated place. Finally, analyze how efficient our application is in real-life environment after implementation. The entire process was generated full automatically without any additional configuration or technical knowledge. In this webinar, 
I showed you only a fraction of possibilities the Auto DevOps service offers. We'll see its full potential only when we start the development of our application and introduce changes. If you are interested in other benefits of Auto DevOps, I invite you to the second part of the webinar.